sharing uh, what God has given him to give to us. Say amen for Pastor Bland as he comes. Man, we, we say again, we thank the Lord for Lady Deborah's grandchildren. <laughs> Amen. I just take pictures with them. But uh, we thank God for, for them. We've been uh, studying, uh, started on a course, uh, Bible 101. And I ask you to forgive me. I did not have a chance to get home. I was trying to do it. I was going to go home and change, put on a suit and all that, but I didn't get a chance. And so you just have to take me like you take me tonight. Yeah. Um, it's hot. Yeah. It's just hot. Um, Bible 101 on how to read your Bible. Have you ever uh, had something that you were like dealing with uh, and, and, and you realized that probably the best thing for you to do is go read the manual? And once you read the manual, a lot of things that was a, a, a mystery to you, it just became clear. And so uh, they have a saying in school that is readers are leaders. Uh, people that read just know things that folks don't, that don't read don't. They just don't. And what some, one trick that people try to use, uh, uh, Zayden, is, is they try to get around somebody that does read and then try to cipher their information away from them. But you know, needy people, folk get tired of them real quick. I don't care who you are, whether you're a child or whether you're grown, you know, if you need too much after a while, you're just too big a burden. I don't mind helping you, but I'm just not gonna carry you. I can't carry you. So, once that we begin to read our Bible, we find out that things are different than what we thought. The reason, Mother Nun, that most of the time, when I get something, I don't read the instructions because I think I know. That's all. I take this and do that and read everything. And it's only when I just, it won't work that I finally go get, that's not the first thing I do. I don't, first thing I do is not read the instruction. The first thing I do is try to figure it out myself. I can tell the truth on myself. It, just, it is what it is anyway. Uh, but the better course would be just to read the instructions. I'd probably save some time and everything. In reading the Bible, we find out when we started Genesis 1 and 1, that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. But we find out uh, over in Isaiah and in Ezekiel that uh, there was an archer, there was an angel there by the name of Lucifer. And Lucifer got in his mind that I'm going to be like the Most High and I'm going to ascend up to the throne. And one writer said they saw him fall like lightning because God is not going to have any other God beside him. And so when he decided that he had a way, then he had to leave. Well, he took a third of the angels with him. So what that did was, that corrupted heaven. Well, we find in the Bible that when God created the heaven and the earth, the next verse said, and the earth was void and without form. Well, God had never created nothing like that. So something happened, but God does not tell us what happened. But God recreated it, and he said, let there be, and there was. And so uh, God put man there to keep and to dress it. Man had no other responsibility. He didn't have no sorrow. He didn't know it. He didn't have nothing. He didn't have to worry about death. He didn't have to worry about death. Some people are scared to talk about death, but I, I, you're going to talk about it. You're going to talk about it go crazy. You're going to talk about it or go crazy. Uh, what, the other day, Memorial Day? I ain't got nothing against folks that, you know, running hot, it's hot out there, and you going from this graveyard, that graveyard, and everything. I stayed at home in the air conditioning. Ain't nobody out there. They gone. They, they gone. You enjoy them while they're here. And, and, but, but Paul says to be absent from the body is to be present. So I read my Bible. I don't have to. <laughs> I read my Bible. Now, fish have to swim. Ducks have to quack, and believers must believe. You can be a believer, but if you don't believe, then you don't get the benefit of it. Believe what? Believe the word of God. The Bible said that faith come by hearing, and hearing the word of God. Well, it's a difference between a believer and a non-believer. When you become a believer, then you stand on God's word, no matter what anybody say. As a matter of fact, Jesus said at one time, he said, you know, if you put in anything, before God, you're not worthy to be his disciple. 
mother, father, sister, brother, and you're going to hear many voices, Sister Sheila Holloway, many voices. And I had the thought today, every offense, when people say stuff to hurt your feelings, like that, every offense is an excellent opportunity for you to live a spiritual life. That's what it is. Because you get in your flesh. And Galatians, the fifth chapter, tells us what the fruit of the flesh is. Divisions, fightings, strife, and all that. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, kind, peace, kindness, joy. That's what will come from the Spirit. But you have to choose, Tara, whether you're going to live a life that's directed by you or whether your life is going to be directed by God. And most of us, if we ever get there, it take a long time because there's a pull to want to do what you want to do. But when you become convinced, there ain't but one way. Uh, that's what Isaiah, it took for us out of that. He, he said, in the year that King us out died, I saw the Lord. I saw who he was, high and lifted up. His train filled the temple. In other words, Brother Alex, it wasn't no place for me. When I realized that in this drama of life, there is no place for what I want. And the day that you throw your hands up and say, not my will. You ever done that? Your children wouldn't act right. People mistreating you for no reason. Your job, you're catching it every day you go in. You trying to work and trying to do this. And you finally come to the end of your rope and you throw your hands up and you say, God, not my will. I've been trying to make these folk act right. I've been trying to hold on to my job. I've been trying to juggle this money. I've been trying to talk to my children. They won't even come by and see me. They act like they don't know me or whatever. But you know what? Not my will. Oh, my God. When you get in God's will, you can make it then. You can make it then. This is not rocket science. It's not rocket science. God ain't, ain't figuring. You don't have to get real smart in order to live a wonderful life. What you got to do is, is that you got to make a decision whether it's going to be your way or God's way. You see? And because we don't know how to read our Bible and rightly divide the word of truth, we end up saying some really foolish stuff. Like I'm trying to be like Jesus. I'm trying to be like Jesus. When the Bible says that we are uh, his body, his bone, his flesh, because of the one baptism where I am baptized into the body of Christ. If I'm in Mother Noah, why I got to try to act like be a big brother? I am Mother Noah. When you see me, you see Mother Noah because I'm in her. I'm a bone, I'm her flesh. But I'll tell you, a believer got to believe. A believer got to believe. It's a sad thing when you're walking around and you're a believer, but you're in unbelief. It's not that you're not saved. It's just you don't get the benefit of who you are. Jesus. Look, let's see. Uh, where do I want to start with this? It, we had a rebellion in earth and in heaven, and we find out that God's plan for man was to put down the rebellion in earth and to put down the uh, rebellion in heaven. Now, when we understand our Bible, we have to look at it like there's two different programs. Okay? You, got, you, got, you, got a, you, got, you have a program to put down the rebellion in the earth. Then you have a program to put down the rebellion in heaven. <sighs> Whenever I get the program messed up, Fred, that's when I get mixed up. Whenever I get the programs mixed up, that's when I get mixed up. The program that deals with the earth deals with the nation of Israel. Because, give me uh, Exodus 19 and 2. God promised them. And God is a very specific God. See, God, God didn't start all this confusion. People started confusion. Have you ever noticed that? I don't know if you got like me, but I got to the place where I, they made me sick of church. I, I don't know about you. They just about made me sick of church. And this old, this old church game that they're trying to run is just so weak. You can see it a mile down. If you're going to trick me, at least make me fool, fool me. Fool me. Thank you, Jesus. But when I see what you do, so many folks, all they do, Mother Nun, you watch what I tell you. So many of these folks going to church, all they do, they go to church every time the door open in order to go home and talk about what happened when they got. 
And some of them try to talk to me about it. Pastor, what you telling me for? I don't go to church over there. I don't care what y'all doing. And I don't think it's very nice of you to go over there and grin in them people's face and then come home and want to talk about everybody that was in there. I don't think that's happened to you very much. You see? So, what, what did I say? Exodus 19. When they came out of um, uh, um, Israel, when they came out of Egypt, when God delivered them and he showed them that you can't make it without me. That's what the, the, the Red Sea was about. He could have put some boats there. But he, 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 God manipulates situations in our life, <laughs> Brother Keontae, where we can go back in our mind. Sometimes you don't even be thinking about it. And something comes to your mind. You say, you know what? That was God looking over me right then. Amen. You ain't thought about it in years. And you say, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. If it hadn't been for God, other people fail and God let you stand up. God let you live where your children, where you could raise your children. He let you live and everything where you could straighten up your path, what, what had happened. He let you live where you would get a chance to be able to take care of your parents or do different things. And so... God brought him out of Egypt, and when he brought him out, he, he, he says, what verse am I looking at? Uh, verse 3. Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shall you say to the house of Jacob. Now, when we read our Bible, we want to read, we want to study, not just read. And when you study, you pay attention to words, because words mean something. Uh, you see? When somebody talk to you sometimes, you ever walked around, walked away and then you think, hmm, what did he say? Now he's, see, you see, it's not only what you say, Robert, but what you don't say. You see? And so when we read our Bible, we want to see what is God saying? Because people will add stuff in order to, you know, just for their benefit. He says here, uh, you, you said to the house of Jacob, not to the church. Not to the body of Christ. And I must understand, when I'm rightly dividing this, I got to find out when did the church come into being. But you can't give instruction to somebody that ain't here. Hey, uh -uh. You can't give instruction to somebody that's not here. If I wasn't here, then you ain't told me nothing. Like folks try to tell you that we just, I wasn't at that meeting. I, I wasn't there. I ain't heard it. I don't know. So now, God, in this Bible, from this point all the way up into Acts the ninth chapter, God got a certain people that he dealing with. And you see, I don't have any problem with that. Uh, uh, brother, give me your name now. Brother Gilbert. Brother Gilbert, I don't have a problem with God dealing with the nation of Israel because he's God. Amen. You, you see, it don't be no problem in the house until the children start thinking they parents. Amen. It don't be no problem in the house. Long as you know you a child and I'm the grown up, everything goes smooth. You get what you want, I get what I want, we just happy we can be. The day that you think that you're on my level, it's a problem. It's trouble. That's right. It ain't gonna be no rest until it be put down. It's rebellion in the house. Well, when I know that God can do what he will, then I take God at his word, and God says, you go talk to the house of Jacob. He didn't, he didn't say talk to the rest of the nation. And he takes all the rest of the nations, he put them in a group called Gentiles. Right. I'm dealing with the house of Jacob. I'm dealing with Abraham's seed, because I told Abraham that I'm going to bless the whole world through you. I'm, I'm going to bless through you. And he says here, and tell the children of Israel, look at verse 4, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. How I bore you on eagle wings and brought you unto myself. God never brings you out without bringing you to himself. God has not brought you out in order to abandon you. God has a purpose, and it's his good purpose, but he's got to get you ready for his purpose. Many things, Mother Brewer, that I wanted after I got saved, I wasn't ready for it. I, I, I thought I was ready for it, but I wasn't ready for it. He said, bore you on eager and brought you certain, look at verse 5. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed. Now, 
I have to understand that he's talking to the nation of Israel and they are laboring up under a conditional covenant. There's conditions to it because it depends upon their behavior. Their behavior. The problem with religion, the reason that, that uh, what is Islam, Christianity, all of these religions, the reason that they don't work is, is because they depend upon you. You ever heard folks talking about, I was a good Christian. Good Christian folks. You don't believe in abortion. You don't believe in gay folks. That's Christianity. That's their religion. You're saying one thing, but if we follow you, we'll see something else. Let me tell you something, it's real. I was telling Lady Deborah today, cause you know, we're dealing with these folks here. Amen. And I told Lady Deborah, I said, you know what? The seed of Adam is real. Adam's seed is, I don't care, you can teach them whatever you want to teach them. You can take them and put them, put your arm around them. You cannot expose, you can do whatever you want to. But the Bible says in Romans 5 and 12, by one man's sin came into the world. And from sin came death. And it's a certain time that they're going to get up and everything and you ain't going to even know who they are. I know what I'm talking about. So what happens here is they are a kingdom of priests. Now, if you're a priest, if you represent me, I got to have you acting a certain way. Amen. I can't have that. I can't have you represent me just acting any kind of way that you want to. Because you see, I'm, I've got a purpose and I'm gonna use you in order to get it done. And your purpose is, you got the whole world that's in idolatry. They serving Baal, the moon god, the sun god. They taking their children and, 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 and uh, offering them to the, the god of fertility. They burning up the children in the valley of Hinnom. They doing all kind of things. But God will never leave himself without a witness. You will say what you want to say. Somebody know who God is. I don't care how people act. It's somebody that know God for themselves. Know him. And so when he starts to use the nation of Israel, he tells uh, Moses and everything, I'm doing this so you will know that I am God. You see, ain't nobody just come here accepting God for being God. You have to go through some things. When you come about the fire, I wish I had three witnesses. When you come about to fire, you you ain't learned this in Sunday school. You, I, uh -uh, I wasn't paying halfway no attention to it. And then when I was asking questions, it was so I get a lot of papa or sucker or something. I ain't wasn't doing it, but I want you to know when I come about to fire, I said I know for myself. I know he's real. Yes, he's real, all by himself. So you're going to be a kingdom, a priest and a holy nation. These are the words which I want you to talk to the nation of Israel. So he's dealing with the nation of Israel because they are supposed to be the ones that will uh, be the instrument through which the seed of the woman will come. Now the nation of Israel won't put the rebellion down, but the seed of the woman. God talked about in Genesis 3. Remember when he said, he said, you're going to bruise his heel, but he's going to bruise your head. Uh, you know, and he did bruise his heel, didn't he? On Calvary's cross. But, but he bruised his, his head. He took him out. He, he victorious over uh, the powers of darkness. So then, uh, give me Philippians 2 and 10 real quickly. 2 and 10. Philippians 2 and 10. Here the Bible says that, that at the name, go, go up to nine, maybe nine or eight. Verse seven. I'll start at five. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. He was the seed of the woman. He was on a mission. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. In other words, what he's saying is, is don't regard yourself. You see, you only have one enemy and it's self. The, the, this world, it's people, and Satan cannot do you any harm because you are in Christ Jesus, and it is his good pleasure to do his purpose in your life. He, he, God does not need your help. He does not need your assistance. As a matter of fact, he has to disable you in order to help you. 
Because as long as you're trying to help, it's the flesh. But once that you disable, that's when the spirit can come in and do the work within you and myself as well. So he says, uh, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a man and was made in the likeness of me. Being found in verse eight, in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. You can't get too weak for God, but you can get too strong for him. You're stiff-necked. You're uncircumcised. You know something. You ever try to tell somebody something that knew something? I know. But, it, and, and, but how easy is it to tell somebody that know they don't know? They just, ooh, they just eager and say, well, how do you do this right here? And do, do you do, do it right there? You got their full attention. But somebody that already know, you try to talk to them, they looking all upside the wall. They, they waiting for you to get, but when you humble yourself, when you realize, you see, you're not, you're not in any shape to worship God until you understand how worthless you are. All right. All right. I'll say that again. Until you realize how worthless it is what you have to offer, then you're not, you're not in any shape to worship God. But when you realize that like Paul did, Paul, and Paul really, you know, he thought, he thought that he was somebody. And this world had, had puffed him up because he, he went past all of his fellows. And he, you know, when he was a little boy, they took him and they took him to Jerusalem. And he sat at the foot of Gamaliel, one of the leading uh, rabbis and teachers. And then he learned the law and he was blameless in the law. But when he met Christ on uh, Damascus Road and he asked himself, who art thou, Lord? I thought I knew who God was. Who art thou? He said, I'm Jesus. Whom thou persecutest, the same one you walked by, the same one that you thought was nothing. I'm the Lord. So Paul, it's hard to kick against the prick. You see? But once, Paul says, that once that I found out who God was, he said, I counted everything else as nothing. I counted it like dumb. I counted it, and I put it aside that I might know him. Now he said, not, I, I, not that I had apprehended I was already there, but I'm pressing toward the mark. I'm trying to know him for myself, but in order to know him, I got to quit trying to know something myself. Let him fill me up. So he says, uh, wherefore God have also highly exalted, giving him a name which is above every name, that, every, that at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bow of things in heaven. He's going to reconcile heaven and earth and things in earth and things under the earth that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Give me, uh, uh, let's see, Romans 11. Give me Romans 11, maybe around 13. Now, what we have to understand when we're reading our Bible is that there's two different programs, one that deals with the earth and one that deals with heaven. One, the earth deals with the nation of Israel, and heaven deals with the body of Christ, the church. And so the body of Christ is different than the nation of Israel. Uh, in the Bible, there are 12 different baptisms. We, we just want to look at three of them. We want to look at John's baptism. That's the one that the church is caught up in now. Going and buying a pool and putting just some hip boots on and taking them and uh, putting, putting that some over their nose and in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and, and putting them in the water. That was John's baptism. But you see now, you have to get your own stuff. The old song was, God bless the child that got his own. That baptism now was for the nation of Israel. And it was for the remission of sins, to take sins away, to remit them. Uh, then you had another baptism, which happened uh, on the day of holy day of Pentecost, Acts the second chapter. On Acts the second chapter, 
the Holy Ghost. And it was promised. Jesus said, I'm praying to the Father. He's going to send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit came in, and, and they were baptized and sat upon them as tongues of flame, flame, uh, tongues of flame, and, and they spoke with other languages. They wasn't jibber-jabber. They spoke with languages because the people that came from all the nations said, these are Galileans, but we all hear God's wonderful works in our own language. They were speaking the language. And this baptism right here was for empowerment to take Israel through the tribulation. It was a purpose for it. Most people think that the church started in Acts the second chapter, but that baptism was not the baptism that we had. Paul talks about in Corinthians 11 chapter, he said there are many members but one body. Then he says, by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. So our baptism, then he goes on in Ephesians the fifth chapter and he says, there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. But the Bible speaks of 12 baptisms, but he says for us, our apostles, Apostle simply means messenger. The one who brought the record or brought the word to us, Gentiles. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, and it's a baptism that baptizes me by faith into the body of Christ. Now, every baptism is about identification. It's identification. What did I tell you? Okay, let me just hit this right and then I go on. Romans 11 and 13, look what Paul says. I must understand, I must understand the difference between Paul and the rest of the writers of the Bible, or I'll never understand the Bible. I'll never understand the Bible. Because then I'm way over there in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, talking about I, I, I can speak to the mountain and the mountain gonna move, it ain't move yet. It ain't gonna move either. That's Mark 11, 23, because he ain't talking to you. He ain't talking to you. I, let me tell you something. When God says something, you ain't got to fix it up. Oh, you know, when things didn't happen and we were believing all that other stuff like that, we said, well, you know, I just didn't pray hard enough. But if God says something, you can do which way, way you want to do. It's still going to be. And the reason is, is because he's told Jeremiah, I will watch over my word to perform. In other words, oh, I'm so glad I serve a God that I ain't got to prop up. I'm so glad I got a God that I don't have to doubt him. I'm so glad, you know what? When you're on the right team. When you're on the right team and everything and y'all over there, this team y'all on and ain't nothing to eat. And the folks over there on the other team just eating good. But when you're on the right one, you ain't worried. Cause my food's already there, Sister Cynthia. I just ain't seen it yet. I found out he's a mighty good leaning post. I found out <laughs> that you can walk by faith and not by sight. I found out you can depend and trust on what God said no matter what it looks. I'm on the right team. I wish I had three folk to tell somebody, look, I'm on the right team now. I'm, I'm on the right team. I want you to know. Uh-huh. I'm riding this boat right here all the way in. I'm not jumping off the boat. Ain't that what Paul told him? Paul, Paul told me that you, you don't know what I'm talking about. Paul told him, said, stay. Paul, Paul said, that, look, see, I, I, I said, last night Jesus came and talked with me. And he told me, he said, if you just stay with the ship, won't a soul be lost. Thank you, Jesus. Now, now, after Paul told him that, I, you know, I know you know what I'm talking about. After Paul told him that, the storm came through. Euclidean. The storm came through and towed a boat up but but they got on board <laughs> some came in on sticks some came in let me he, thank I'm going to leave that alone right there I, I'm going to hold that to Sunday thank you Jesus to stay with this I'm, got to stay with him that's why I'm at Bible study tonight I want to know what the Lord say about it don't fix it up for me give it to me just like, don't dilute don't water mine down give it to me I trust him I trust him. Just give me what he said. Yeah. I know it's going to do me good. Isn't that right? Yes. Isn't that what, what, what Moses, that's what Moses, our uh, 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 father-in-law told him? Yeah. Said, look here, stay with me. Said, we'll do you good. 
Look what he says. I, sp I speak. This is Paul. Now, if you read your Bible, you'll find out that Peter, James, and John were ministers of the circumcision. And Jesus was too. In his earthly ministry, when a woman stopped him and said that her child was sick. Now, you know that anybody say, you say a child, we got more compassion for children than we do for grown folks. We'll tell folks, I ain't feeding no grown. But if it was a child, if, you know, if you're running that big a con game and you're a child, I don't care. I'm going to feed you anyway. But she said her child, right? Matthew 15 chapter. My, my child is grievously vexed with the devil and everything. And Jesus told him, said, look, I, I, I didn't come here to fool with you. It ain't your time. It, it ain't your time. Well, when you get to reading this Bible, it'll make sense. Right. Listen to what these old wives tell these folks tell you. And then the other, you know, the other side told him, said, listen, leave the master alone. Go on. But you know what? That woman wouldn't take no for an answer. She said, look, I understand the fact that you are minister to the circumcision and you only came to the lost sheep of Israel. I understand all that. She said, but I also understand that even the dogs get the crumb from the table. If I could just get some, the crumbs, <laughs> but I can't go back. You know what? God will put you in a situation where you can't walk off and leave him. He'll put you in a situation. Say, God, I ain't got nowhere else to go. Everybody has to turn me down. The doctors can't do her no good. That one that Jesus said, look here, because see, faith moved God. And Jesus told her, this right, woman, I ain't seen this kind of faith here in Israel. Your daughter is healed and made whole. So he says, I speak to you Gentiles. Okay, well, people that don't understand their Bible, they say, we make too big a deal out of Paul. But I ain't making no deal out of Paul. I don't even know Paul. I'm just reading the Bible. And the Bible says that Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles, he said, I speak to the Gentiles. So then Paul's uh, uh, writings or letters is what? It, it, it's uh, Romans through Philemon. He got 13 books that speak to the body of Christ. He got 13 books that tell me who I am. Let me tell you something. You might be raised in Helena, Arkansas, but if you was raised in a house where you had a mom and daddy that told you who you was, Helena can't do you no harm. Now, they're they going to talk about you. They're going to say, well, he just went over there. But you know what? You, didn't, you don't give me my identity. My mom and daddy told me who I was. And so I ain't got no business going doing with uh, this and that and whatever. I don't believe what y'all believe. And so when you, from your apostle, tells you who you are, because, you know, this Paul says, I speak to you Gentiles in as much. The reason he's speaking, because in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. Of the Gentiles. Look what he says right there, Mother Nun. He didn't say he magnified himself. I magnify my office. Let me tell you something. When you find out what it is that God have called you to do, that's why I'm still here 15 years later saying the same thing, doing it. I don't give me no difference. If I'm tired, if I'm going through hell and high water, talking about me or whatever you're going to do. Paul says, I magnify my hope because God didn't have to choose me to do this. I did not know. He says, I, I magnify my office. Look what, it, look, look what he said. Look where I want to go. Give me 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy, first chapter. Right about 17 verse one. Somewhere right there. <sighs> Start at eleven. That's good. That's uh, look what he says. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. I can't go back to it, but over in Romans, over there, he, Paul talks about my gospel. It's my gospel. A special good news that God gave. And you know what? When you don't know how to rightly divide this word and you don't know how to read your Bible, then you say all ignorant stuff like this right here. The church will never be the salt of the earth until it start until it stop 
uh, soft selling the gospel. Because they think that you're really preaching the gospel when you stand up talking about all you homosexuals need to stop dead and you need to leave this man wife alone and you need to do this and you need to do all. They think they really preaching the gospel then. And I just had to tell one person, I said, no, the church never will be the salt of the earth because he was talking to Israel. And the gospel ain't hard. The gospel is good news. And the good news is, is that what you couldn't do I got happy right now. Somebody left heaven and came down and took it on for you. And so now God is not imputing sin unto man. And he has committed unto us the ministry of reconciliation. To tell us that God was in Christ reconciling the world back unto himself. But when you don't read the Bible. And you know what? I'm not looking for no disciples. I ain't looking for no followers or nothing like that. But... All I want is the truth. And I want to, to, to tell the truth. Because I believe it'll make you as happy as it made me. Because I, it's bad when you go into church and hear a lie. That's bad. It ain't the fact like you wasn't going to church. You've been going to church for years. And never hearing. And I'm, I'm like them folks that in the Bible. Ever learning but never coming to knowledge of the truth. Jesus. Look what he said, but God, he says, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who have enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. I just didn't believe. You see, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And the only way to get anything from God is through believing him. You, your life didn't change because you got strong and because you got no sense or nothing. One day, God bless you to believe him. And when you believe God, all kind of miraculous things begin to happen in your life. You begin to know stuff that you just didn't know. You begin to be able to conduct yourself in a way that you only had wanted to before. God enabled you. Uh, he says, um, and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. You see, it's not in me, but it's in Christ. And so that's why I have to go through the cross, have to be baptized out of myself into Christ. Because faith and love is in Christ. It's not in me. It's not in me. I'll never find it in me. Look what he says in verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ came in the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Now, just looking at that word, it will make you think that he's saying I was the worst sinner. And that's not what he's saying. It's actually a Greek word, protos, which means first. That is a demar demarcation line with Paul. Paul's ministry was different than Peter, James, and John. If you read Galatians, the second chapter, Acts, the 15th chapter, you will see where they made a gentleman's agreement that you go to the Gentiles and we will go to the Jews. Because the, the gospel that he was preaching was different. They were preaching the gospel of the kingdom, preparing them for this earthly kingdom that was going to be set up. Remember, we talked about two different programs. Two different programs. Now the program with the Jews, it got short-circuited. Because when their Messiah came, remember John said he came unto his own, but his own received him not. He offered himself to them. The king came, but they did not want the king. They told Pilate, they told him, said, you know what? Crucify him. We have no king, but, but, but you. He said, let his blood be upon us. But Jesus, when he was on the cross, Pharaoh, Jesus said, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Now, up under the law, if a man did something and did not know it, then he could flee to the city of refuge. Right. If you killed a man and you killed him unwittingly, they had certain cities that were set up. So this gave the nation of Israel another chance. 
And so when the Holy Spirit came in Acts the second chapter and he sent them out there, he made another appeal. Peter says in Acts the third chapter, he said, this same Jesus that you by wicked hands have crucified, God have made him both Lord and Christ. And so therefore, if you will receive him, he will come back during the time of refreshing but they did not receive him. In Acts the seventh chapter, Deacon Stephen stood up and he made a final appeal to him and Deacon Stephen said, look here, he went all the way back from the beginning up to the present time. He said, God done dealt with you hard-headed, stiff-necked, and uncircumcised heart all these days right here. Your blood be upon your own hands. And when he did that, they, they gnashed on him with teeth and, and Paul held the garments. The Bible said that Jesus had ascended in Acts the second chapter and sat there on the right hand of the Father. But when they began to, to stone Stephen, the Bible said that he stood up. Well, when he stood up, that was a sign that he was coming and getting ready to bring in the wrath of the tribulation. But then we find over in the ninth chapter that God saved a little Jew by the name of Paul. He took the he took the worst. He took the one that was crying out threatening and slaughter. He took a man that did not care whether you was a man, woman, boy, or child. If you was calling on the name of Jesus. He was taking you and putting you in. He was persecuting. But Paul says that God is so merciful that he looked upon me. I was injurious. I was a blasphemer. I was against it. You see, he's trying to show that God has switched programs. He was dealing with the nation of Israel in order for them to be a kingdom of priests. They had to walk a certain way. But over here, when he deals with the heavenly program, the body of Christ, it has nothing to do with you. It's like God has put you to sleep. He has killed you. He has cut you off. And he, he has put you in him. You don't have to act like Jesus. You don't have to act like Jesus. The Bible says that he took our sin and gave us his righteousness. So therefore, I'm just as righteous as he is, and God is not imputing sin on today. The world has been reconciled, but they can't receive it until they receive it by faith. A believer has to believe. I may not be as smart as the theologians. I may not uh, uh, have what they have and all this and everything, but I believe. I, I believe. I believe. Paul says, I believe. Therefore, I have I spoken. Paul said, I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that, which he has committed. Uh, 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 is your testimony is all the days of my life. I said, Pastor, I don't mean no harm. I don't mean no harm, Pastor. I don't want to tell your place up or nothing, but I want you to know all the days of, from the earliest of my recollection, God been good to me. And not only has he been good to me, God been good to my folk. God brought us from nothing to something. The things that we've seen, the things that we've been able to enjoy, the peace that I have. God did it, and he did it all by himself. He did it all by himself. And I, and cause he God. And don't change. That means I can step over into the morrow knowing that he gonna be, oh my God, he gonna be just as good tomorrow as he was yesterday. Because he said, I'm the Lord and I changed not. I got two minutes. He says, hey look here, that in me first he might show long suffering. See, God wants to show you that the kind of love I got ain't got nothing to do with you and how you act. Because see, it ain't nothing, ain't, ain't nothing but uh, uh, pride that won't make a man admit the bad shape that he's in. If you're a son of Adam, you're in bad shape. I don't want to know all you done done. God in heaven, no, I don't. I, I feel sorry for you church detectives and investigators. Y'all full of mess. The worst thing in the world I hate is to get to riding with somebody and find out, oh, you that kind of person? You know everybody be in this. You know what? As soon as I get with you, this be the last trip we take. Because I know you've you, you, you been talking about me. I'll go talk about me as soon as I leave. You know everything. Look what he says. That in me first, he might show all, all for a pattern. Pattern. Paul was the pattern to show that if he can save me with how I was doing, he chose me as a pattern to them which should 
hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. I said that was the last verse, but give me Ephesians uh, 3 and 8. Ephesians 3 and 8, that'll be the last one. I have to, Brother Gilbert, if I ever understand the Bible, I have to be able to differentiate between Paul's ministry and the rest of the apostles. Because he was the apostle to the Gentiles, and he said, I magnify mine office. In other words, I want you to wonder why they didn't ever tell us. Sound like Satan on it. Because he said, if this gospel be in, in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, he said, if it be he, it is he them the law, that the God, the little G of this world, have blinded the minds. Blinded the mind, but I'm woke. I'm woke. Been woke by 15 years. I'm woke. I ain't, I ain't don't intend to go back to sleep. Mm-mm, because I get joy. I'm like my dad, he didn't say joy. I get joy when I think about it. Thank you, Jesus. Look what he says. Go back, go back up, just a couple of verses, maybe six. Just go, okay. Go back up to four. We'll read that and we'll be through. Go up at one, darling. It's all good. He says, For I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. God took him prisoner, didn't he, Mom? On, 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 on that Damascus road. He had to tell it three times. Some get good. He told it in Acts 9, 22, and 26. That got good to him. He says, If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you. The body of Christ. This is where I get my marching instructions from, from Apostle Paul. I ain't trying to lift up Paul. Because when you talk like that, what people say, Keontae, they, they say, I'm following Jesus. I ain't following no Paul. This is crazy as a bishop. The resurrected Jesus sent his message through Paul. The word of God ain't no man. It's the Holy Spirit that's speaking. So he says, uh, how that by revelation, he made known unto me the mystery. Now, a mystery is simply a secret. As I wrote a four and a few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. Before Paul, it was a mystery. The secret thing, Deuteronomy 29 and 9, the secret thing belonged to God. And, it, and if he don't tell you, you just don't know. All those ages, he didn't even bring it, but then he told Paul something that had been hid throughout all the ages. As it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Look at verse 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, given unto me by the effectual working of his power, unto me who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable. You can't find it out now by looking. God got to show it to you. But when he show it to you, you got it. When he show it to you, ain't a devil in hell. I don't care how much education you got. I don't care what church you belong to. The unsearchable, he said, he gave me this grace to show you the unsearchable riches of his, of Christ. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world have been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now to the principalities and the powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Clap your hands for the Lord. That's enough. <laughs>